This is Mathematics for Computer Science, 6042J, 18062J, a joint subject between electrical engineering and computer science and mathematics. Welcome. The instructors are Professor Adam Chapala and Professor Albert R. Meyer, and I'm Albert. Hiya. Quickly summarizing what this course is about, it's about the uh, math that computer scientists almost all need regularly and which you're not likely to have come across in your standard calculus classes. You may have seen some of this stuff in high school. For example, uh, in calculus courses people talk about functions on the real numbers and sometimes they'll talk about functions on the complex numbers, but computer scientists are usually dealing with much more abstract functions on data types and even functions on functions. Yeah. And uh, I wonder how many of you, if I ask you to define abstractly what a function was, could give that definition. In a couple of weeks uh, in this class, you'll be able to do that with facility. Um, we will also be talking about a variety of standard discrete structures, starting with the numbers, which we think of as a structure because it's the numbers packaged with the operations on them, like plus and times and exponentiation. We'll also talk about uh, various other standard graphical uh, data structures like graphs and trees, and we'll look at uh, methods for counting the numbers of these different kinds of data structures is a typical fundamental problem in computer science where you typically want to know how big is the search space. For example, the search space of passwords had better be large or a cracker can just search through them all to find one that works. And finally, we'll talk about discrete probability theory, which is simply a version of probability theory where we can get by with sums instead of getting into the complications of integrals. So here's a quick sanity check uh, or vocabulary check. Do you know what discrete means? And I'll give you a hint, it doesn't mean discrete. If you don't know, this is a good moment to stop the video and look it up. Now, this course, to begin with, has a stellar website where most of the material for the course is available. So that's where you're going to find our textbook, uh, co-authored by me and two other instructors from the math department. Uh, you'll find the class calendar, and lots of information about how the course is organized and graded, and it's also where you're going to go to submit problems. We're doing electronic submission. We expect you to produce PDFs for your assignments and problem submissions, although we expect them to be scans of handwritten documents. You're welcome to typeset them, but that's beyond the call. And for the record, the Stellar website URL is at the bottom of this slide, but of course you can easily find it googling MIT. Um, there are uh, regular readings and online problems that you're expected to do as well as watching online videos. Just which is due when are all available in the class calendar on Stellar and indeed there are some readings and videos to watch starting, uh, start, due starting Friday. You'll find again the details on the Stellar site. There's also an MITx site, 6042R, uh, and it's important that you find this site and go there and register for this class in order to be assigned a final session assignment and team assignment. Please register by Friday night. The link to the uh, MITx site is on the Stellar site. It's on the left-hand nav bar. Uh, the, Stellar, the MITx site is also where we keep things like the videos and the slides and the online questions that we provide as a way for you to do a kind of sanity check or self-check on whether you understand the material. The online questions are not graded for correctness, but we do count how many times you submit answers because that's what you get credit for. It's a participation grade. What's special about this class is how it works. This is this class is based on active learning in teams. Uh, there are one and a half hour sessions three times a week on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and the sessions consist almost entirely of team learning through uh, graduated prob problem working graduate through graduated problems and team problem solving. Uh, there is. Uh, virtually no live lecturing in this class except we try to say hello to you at the beginning of the class just so you know we're there. We do wander around during the, uh, the team sessions. And uh, the teams themselves are uh, 
grouped in, in typically six to eight students per team. Each team has a team coach. Each team has its own nearby whiteboard. Uh, and the objective of the team, problem by problem, is to get up a solution to the problem that everybody on the team feels that they understand and is ready to explain if called upon. So one of the consequences of a class that's based on, on teamwork and participation is that attendance is required, for which I apologize, but I haven't figured out a way to run a class based on teamwork if you're not there to participate in the team. Uh, the pr there are also problem sets that are due most Fridays, although the problem sets are, I think, shorter than usual, certainly shorter than when this class is taught by the math department, because you're doing so much studying and problem solving in class. Problem sets should take you somewhere between two and three hours. Uh, if longer, we'll be polling for that and, uh, and try to adjust them. Uh, for almost every class, you'll, suppo you'll be supposed to do some reading and watch some videos and do some online problems beforehand because you have to be prepared if teamwork is going to work. Uh, there are three midterms, each taking a full session, which is actually, of course, 80 minutes by MIT counting of what an hour and a half means. And we also provide a, a Piazza Forum, which, whose use is optional, but, but lots of students find it helpful. So let's talk a little bit about teamwork. Um, what's good about teams? Well, it's an efficient way to learn, and it's fun often. Now, the special thing that's going on here is that um, while I think that teamwork works for most any group of students, What's special about MIT is that you guys are the best students in the world. Literally, there is no other institution that has uh, better students. There are, we have a number of peers to be sure, but there's nobody where you can document and look at the statistics and say this is a better student body. That means that the people around you are an enormous resource for you to benefit from, and the teamwork gives you that opportunity to learn from the best students in the world, and in fact to learn how to work with them and help them benefit from your abilities. Uh, it usually is fun and works well. Uh, in addition, teamwork is the way the world works. It's the way professional organizations work. It even is the way that, uh, that research works. Uh, even in special elite fields like math, where you think of math as being done by loners, the truth is the learners talk to, typically talk to a lot of people and bad ideas around. And uh, so it's, it's important to develop teamwork skills. Uh, some of which include the ability to communicate with not only teammates, but the larger world, which is a crucial skill uh, as you move off into out of school and into the professional world. Uh, finally, uh, the, our teams are designed to be mixed up and heterogeneous. We try to mix up men and women and freshmen and seniors and uh, Arabs and Jews and 3-0s and 5-0s so that you are getting to work with a diverse team that you can learn to communicate with and benefit from. You'll learn to cope with diversity willy-nilly as best we can create diversity on the teams. And this is the, usually the good. Things generally work out well. Now, there are also some bad about teamwork, which I mentioned. First of all, you have to be there. And you have to be there prepared or it doesn't work. We will penalize you if you uh, arrive, obviously, unprepared, and even worse if you don't arrive at all. Uh, what's more, this obligation to be there and be prepared is pretty unremitting. You can't, in this class, decide that you're going to enter the robot co competition and take a month off and focus entirely on that or some startup and then come back to this class and catch up. You will have missed a, a month work of productive teamwork and you'll be penalized for not being there. So if that is not a style, if your style is not to simply, in a regular, orderly way, keep up with the class, then you, I encourage you to think about uh, taking it another term when it's taught in more standard lecture recitation uh, style, which will next happen in the fall of 2016. Also, sometimes things that go wrong are that very well-prepared students are slowed down. Uh, very weak students can be left behind. And uh, there's always an issue in any kind of a team of dealing with difficult people. Now, we are pretty experienced in managing teams to cope with all of these problems. Uh, your team coach will be working with you and watching what's going on to bring out the good and control the bad. Uh, as your team works together. And I will be around, as will Adam, watching 
and overseeing what's happening team by team. So we'll also be trying to make sure that this whole process works for you. Uh, again, let me wrap up with a quick reminder. Uh, register for your team assignment on the MITx site by Friday midnight.